Hey everybody, it's Josh, and for this week's Select, I've chosen our 2012 episode on dog shows. You know, I've always wondered what the deal is with dog shows. How do you compare a poodle to a Pekingese to a Parfageffen? I made that last one up. Regardless, it turns out there's a whole fascinating world going on beneath the surface of dog shows, and if you just sit back and enjoy this app, you'll learn all about it. Welcome to Stuff You Should Know, a production of iHeartRadio. Hey, and welcome to the podcast. I'm Josh Clark. With me, as always, is Charles W. Chuck Bryant. And that makes this Stuff You Should Know, the podcast. Indeed. About dogs. My favorite topic. (laughs) Yeah? That's one of them. What else? I don't know. Dogs. I'm one of those people that like dogs more than many humans sure so uh as you know and so you know although dog shows i'm not real big on i love watching dog shows yeah i just i've never gotten into them i know there's criticism there's controversy but i don't care about that i just i'm kind of bored watching them i i never get bored it's almost like um watching uh a fractal screensaver or something It, it it sucks me into that level of like just zoned altitude. Is it point? Uh, is it appointment television for you? Like, do you make a point every Febu- uh, February something? I think. I think uh, last year it was it <clears throat> Valentine's Day. Yeah. Okay. It's so early February. Yeah. Last year, when a little uh, Pekingese won in Maliki. I think I remember seeing that dog. Look at that dog. Its face is smushed. <laughs> it's beyond cute. Look at that hair. So apparently, um, if you want to blow up the Twitterverse with angry tweets. You can um, talk politics. Yeah. You can talk religion. Yeah. Or you can hold the Westminster Dog Show (laughs) and select a best in show. People get pretty upset. Man, people went crazy last year. So like... um, What, like you commenting or just in the Twitter universe? People on Twitter. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm just a fan. I don't... I don't. I didn't know if you live tweeted during the show. No, no, no. Okay. Um... But I live tweet very infrequently. It's it's tough on the thumbs. Sure. Um, but so Maliki, this little cute four year old Pekingese, um, won best in show, and um, people were really mad. They called it um, a mop, cousin it, uh, Geraldo Rivera's mustache, a Wookie, Snooky for some reason. Maybe just because it rhymes with Wookie, and that's what they were going for. Yeah. And they had just been watching Jersey Shore. Who knows? That's silly. Um, but Maliki is no slouch. Um, it had won 114 Best in Show awards. Wow. Only four years old. So this thing's been mopping up the competition. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, I just made myself shiver. Yeah. But people went crazy. They, 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 one guy said he was a fan of the um, Dalmatian. He said, I'm done with these dog shows. And I think that happens every year. Because Until the next dog show. Exactly. Yeah. There's a lot of people who feel very passionately about dog shows. There's plenty of people like me who love to just zone out and watch them. Sure. Um, and then, you know, there's people who just don't know anything about them. And that's what we're here for today, to explain <laughs> everything there is to know about how dog shows work. That's right. And this will either be really interesting to you, or you may just zone out like Josh does, watching the Westminster show. You know, though, um, I don't think we've ever released an uninteresting episode. Maybe they have uninteresting titles, but you go on and you listen to it, it will interest you. I defy you right now, <laughs> stuff you should know listeners who haven't listened to every single episode. So we'll call you the 28%. Yeah. Um, to go out and find an episode that sounds boring in the title that you've not heard and listened to it, and I guarantee you, you will find it interesting. It's the it's just that thing. Yeah, one comes to mind. College football rankings. Interesting to me, but boy, our listeners are not into college football. But was it for the most part? Boring? Was it really not interesting? There's nothing interesting in there? I think if you're not into sports at all, then it was probably really boring. Gotcha. But um, I all right, we'll, more we'll avoid that one. Yeah, okay. or the guarantee is void. But hey, if you're into sports, you'll love it. No, I think on the <laughs> other end, if you were into sports, it was like, well, you guys messed this up, or you forgot this. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. Oh, and team. hey, by the way, congratulations. We are now an award-winning podcast. We got a stitchy. Uh, is that what they're called? That's what I made up. Mark Marin had to call our, our names. He hosted the Stitcher Awards last night. Oh, really? Yeah. He won one himself for uh, Best Episode. 
Yeah, we were nominated for that too. For we were one that I didn't think was like ten accidental inventions. Yeah, I mean that was okay, but I would have picked a different best episode. I think it was the saccharine bit that really led us into that. Oh yeah, see. sure. On the toast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So anyway, dog shows. Yeah, um, conformation shows, not firmation. C O N F O R are what we're going to talk about for most of the show, and that is. Purebred dogs competing against other purebred dogs, almost exclusively based on physical attributes. Yeah, that's the uh, Westminster Dog Show that you see every year at Madison Square Garden. Yes. Um, It's just, yeah, what the dog looks like, and um, basically it's appearance, it's body structure, and then to a lesser extent, um, it's... uh, Dude. Yeah, it's attitude. <laughs> it's character. Because that also, what they're trying to do here, if you've ever watched a part of this, and I love that this, uh, who wrote this one? Jane McGrath. Oh, old Jane. I remember her. Uh, she wrote that, have you ever been channel surfing and come across one? I feel like a lot of people, that is their entrance into the dog show world, is they're flipping it around in February, and they go, oh, yeah, that thing right. where the Christopher Guest movie yeah. mocked. Uh, I'll watch a few minutes of that, and I've done that, and I've always been like, I don't get it. How are they judging these other dogs against each other? It's a very good question. And we're here to tell you how. Yeah, um, because, you know, you uh, this little Pekingese went up against things like Great Danes and yeah. Dalmatians and Dobermans and all that, and it still beat them all. And the way it did that is how they judge any kind of confirmation show. They judge the dog by the standards of its breed, and then the dog that most closely fits those idealized standards yeah wins these very specific registered i'm gonna say registered standards yeah so let me give you an example i was looking this up there's a the, and the akc has developed these standards from information taken from breeders that's right and um the for example the lakeland terrier um one of the standards is uh-huh. its attitude right and it has uh, the Lakeland Terrier has quote a bold, gay, and friendly with a confident cock of the walk attitude. Nice. So this this is the kind of thing that the AKC sits around does. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> I love that. Uh, in England, they have uh, different standards. That's the American Kennel Club, and they have a different show called Crufts C U C R U F T S. And theirs is a little bit different, but we'll get to that later. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a little bit. For the most part, we're, we're focused on Westminster and the AKC. So in addition to attitude, yeah, character traits, um, there's all those physical traits that the AKC um, has maintained on each breed. So, for example, balance and not how well the dog stands up, although the gait is important. Yeah, if your dog like falls over, that's probably a bad sign. But, yeah, it's yeah, it's not going to win no. this year. Um Balance is what we would call symmetry for humans. It's you know sure. the overall proportions of its shape and size. Yeah, like that Scottish Terrier is really pretty, except boy, look at those ears. Look at the size of its butt. Yeah, you're out. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Scotty. Uh, weight, size, eyes, and again, eyes is size and shape and color. Yep. If you got that one wonky eye, mm-hmm. forget about it. Unless you're an Australian Shepherd. Yeah, are they supposed to have one? I think they're supposed to have a blue and a brown. A blue and a brown. Everyone I've seen has. Yeah. But what does the AKC say? I don't know. They don't care what schlubs like you and I think. The head shape? Of course. Ears? Muzzle? Whiskers? Thickness of whiskers is a, an important one. I oh, mean, really? Yeah, I would think that'd be an indicator of uh, poor health. What? If they had bad whiskers? Thin whiskers. Oh, thin brittle whiskers. whiskers. I, I think you uh, you want nice stout whiskers, like uh, <laughs> a centimeter thick each. <laughs> okay. That's probably the standard for any breed. This is the JKC? Yeah. <laughs> uh, teeth, you always see uh, them checking out the teeth. Um, you don't want any kind of weird scissor bite, or uh, I guess certain breeds have the, the underbite. Yeah, a lot of them do the brachial cardi. Yeah, our own Jerry's dog, Charlie, I recently learned, has a bit of a little underbite. That's and cute. sometimes the lip will get hung and the little bottom teeth are just kind of jutted out there. That's very cute. <laughs> it's very cute. You want to go over and like adjust the lip. Say, so here you go. Yeah, I, Moisten I, up. I like dogs that have like teeth sticking like Shizus. Yeah, boxers too, right? Uh, boxers, yeah. um, 
Pugs, Pekingese. Oh, did that one? Yeah. They all have that. It's it's like brachial cardi. It's like anything with a smushed face usually has an underbite as well. Oh, okay. Uh, teeth? All right, we just said teeth. Tail, I mean. Mm-hmm. Um, shoulders. And these these dudes are feeling, these judges are feeling these dogs as well, like muscle and bone. Like they're trying to get under the fur. Yeah. To judge these things. So one of the big things your dog has to learn very early on is to let strangers feel them up. Yeah. In all sorts of uncomfortable places. Yeah, you don't want your dog snapping at this guy when he fondles no. your dog. And if your dog snaps at the judge and then falls over, <laughs> yeah. just just go home. It's all over. What did they say in Best in Show? <laughs> when the dog broke his gate, the one guy said, oh, he might as well just taken a dump right there on the floor yeah, or something. Yeah, Michael McKean said that, I think. <laughs> He's awesome. Um, and then, of course, there's coat length and texture, uh, and color. And very much like thoroughbred horses, there's accepted colors for each breed. Yeah. You got a dog that's uh, blue, and it's supposed <laughs> to be a golden retriever, you got problems. Yeah, if you got a blue retriever, you have many problems. Although you could probably make some money taking it around the country. Oh, sure. Like in an old-timey circus. Uh, where you can't make money is by winning the Westminster Dog Show. Yeah, that's a good point. You would think that these these things offer like big cash prizes, but they don't. It is really about prestige and uh, being one of those dog show people, like, you know, wearing that ribbon and getting that trophy. Sure. Wearing sensible shoes and, <laughs> you know, learning to walk very fast <laughs> That's right. a leash. Because your gait matters as a human. Right. You know? So uh, you put all this together, right? And yes. these, these judges know the standards for the breeds. And when they're looking at this, these dogs, they're saying they're matching it up to their uh, mental catalog that sure. they have. Um, and then the ones that b- most closely match the idealized version of the breed, like we said, wins. Boom. And that's how you get the the little, you know, Lhasa Apso or the Pekingese that can beat out like a Great Dane or a German Shepherd or something like that. That's how they compare them. Yeah, and that's only been going on since, uh, I say only, since 1907. Um, previous to that, and this has been going on at Madison Square Garden uh, and in New York City since 1877. Yeah, they it's didn't old have timey. big time. They didn't have a best in show at all until 1907 because they said, you, you know, how do we codify this? Right, and they did. They figured it out. And it's really, Jane says, it sounds confusing, but once I spell it out, it's simple, but it's still a little confusing. Yeah, it took me a couple of times to to figure this out. There's just a lot of steps. It. She does a great job of explaining oh, yeah. it. It's just there's a lot to it. So you want to you want to explain this? So the Westminster Dog Show, we should say, is the pinnacle, the peak in the United States for any dog. But there's a long road ahead of it. Like we said, uh, yeah. Malachi, the winner of the 2012 show, had 114 best in shows under its belt. Yeah, and Jane called it the Super Bowl. I would say it's more like an All Star game, if the All Star game counted for very, something. Very picky, you know, because it's all these All Stars from the different breeds from all these shows, right? Making this final, it's All-Star like the game. Uh, the Little League World Series for dogs. Okay. <laughs> Great, it's like the chess. <laughs> it's like Bobby, what's his face? Fisher. Fisher. Yeah. Almost said Bobby Riggs. Man, you guys. Then it'd know be like tennis story. <laughs> Who Bobby Riggs? Bobby Fisher. Oh yeah, was, <sighs> sad. Did you ever see Searching for Bobby Fisher? I did. It was a great movie. Years back, uh, and then you know, of course, um, that song, One Night in Bangkok. It's from a, a Broadway show, and I can't remember what the Broadway show is, but it was based on Bobby Fischer and his life, and how he moved to Asia and just really? kind of devolved into madness. That song is about Bobby Fischer. And that was from a Broadway show? As far as I know, yes. And then the pop version was just re-recorded by whoever that was? Possibly by the original oh, by composers, the original. Huh. but for the radio. I thought One Night in Bangkok was about... Uh, you uh, would think. <laughs> Never mind. I was going to bring up... All you had to do was just end there. Yeah. Who's Gary Glitter? That's who I was thinking. Yeah, I don't think so. I think he got in trouble in Bangkok, if you know what I mean. He did, and he recently got in trouble with the whole uh, Jimmy Seville stuff. Oh, yeah. He was part of that, too, wasn't he? Apparently so. Gross. Man, what a sidetrack that was. So, um, okay. To be uh, a champion, right? This is what a dog aims for, is to be a champion. That's right. Because if you're a champion, you um, get to add CH as a <laughs> prefix to your name. Yeah, like I would be CH, then Chuck, if I were a champion dog. Yeah, you'd be Ch-Chuck. Ch-Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, all right, so let's walk everyone through this, right? Yeah. All right, to be a champion, you got to get compile a certain number of points, uh, and you earn these points at different dog show competitions around the country that are not the Westminster Show. Yeah, and from different judges. Right. You got to get at least 15 points from three different judges, mm-hmm. or at least two major wins from separate judges, and a major win uh, is one where you can earn three, four, or five points, and that's when you can get the ch- right as a champion. Just for that little show, though, right? Or no, for the compilation of those shows. Yeah, yeah. Right. So um, when you get this, uh, when you get to become a champion, um, when you have... I think it's 15 points and two major wins from separate judges. Yes, you're right. Um, you you get to this point also, like you said, it's not Westminster. It's these little specialty shows. Sure. And I don't mean little to diminish them. I'm just saying compared to Westminster, they're much smaller. It's not on ESPN. And there's specialty shows. Well, it's on the Ocho, I'll bet. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> um, it's, these specialty shows are based on um, specific breeds. Right. So you'll go to like the Chihuahua show. Or um, the the Lakeland Terrier show, right? Uh, and the the dogs are separated between uh, male and female, and we can say the B word in this one because that's what it's called. That's my new band name, by the way. What? Winner's bitch. Okay. <laughs> um, and uh, the 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 males and the females are then separated into six s- different classes. Yes. You've got the puppy class, the twelve to eighteen month old class. Yeah. Novice, so uh, those are dogs that are um, six months or older that haven't won any points yet, haven't won any first place prizes. Yeah, so they can be a little older, but they're still rookies as far as the competition stage goes. Right, and six months is the minimum age to compete in an AKC show. Yeah, below that, you're just there's no way. Yeah, they're too dumb, too unpredictable. Um, bred by exhibitor is a class of dogs where the um, person showing the dog is also the breeder. Yeah. And the breeder, by the way, is the owner of the dog's mother. Right. Um, there's American bred, which is any dog born in the U.S. Sure. USA. Um, and then there's open. The open class is open to any dog. And this is the only class that any dog that's already become a champion yeah. can compete in in the specialty show. Oh, they are? Yeah, that's the only class open to them. Oh, okay, Because gotcha. they could just mop up all the other classes. They have to face any takers okay, in gotcha. the open class. All right, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. So uh, they divide it up by male and female. The males go first, and they you know, inspect all the males as they do at any of the shows. You know what that means. <laughs> Fondling. Yeah. Uh, you give them the award ribbons, first through fourth place. And uh, you don't get any points at this point, though. The first place winners of the male class have to compete for the winner's dog, the females class compete for winner's bitch. Man. You want to say it. I've said it twice now. I don't want to say it. I, I find it <laughs> difficult to say. Oh, really? It's just the connotations are... Sure. You know, I've never used that word uh, in, like, anger about someone. That's, it, it's, a, it's a very rough, it's terrible awful. word. Yeah. And I don't, I, don't, I don't think that makes me a good person or anything, but there's just a couple of things that, like, I wouldn't call my worst enemy, and that's one of them. Gotcha. All right. I don't have any enemies, though. What am I talking about? So you've got the uh, winner's dog and the winner's bitch. Yep. <laughs> um, and uh, this is this is the point where they start um, winning awards. Winning points. Points, I mean. I'm yeah. sorry. Um, so this is all, all these different dogs have been weeded out by the different classes, and then they're, they're, you've got the – out of all these six classes – of the male cat, male version and the female version, you have winners, right? Yep. And then there's uh, so this is where the points start being awarded. Then there's chances for more points in the same show. Um, any champion can come along and take the winners on for um, best in show or best in breed. Yes, and you can and you compile extra points depending on how many dogs they beat out. So if you beat out a bunch of more dogs, you can earn up to. F- Five points. Right. Five's the most. And remember, a major win is three, four, or five points in a win. Yes. Okay. Um, so you can win some by being the winner's dog or the winner's bitch. You can, um, the champions can take those guys on in the best of breed. Yep. And then um, between those two, the winner's bitch and the winner, um, winner's dog, there's another walk off, I guess. Yeah. 
And um, they can win points, whoever beats who. And then there's the best of opposite sex. Yeah, that was the best of winners. Right. And then the best of opposite sex, which it says the best dog of the opposite sex of the best of breed. Yes. So whichever dog, whether it's the winner's dog, the winner's bitch, or any champion that took them on and won. Yeah. The best of breed. Say so that's a male that wins. Right. And there's another category for the winners that's the females. Female. Or vice versa, the opposite, best of opposite sex. <laughs> Basically, it's like we got all these points sitting around. Let's let's get rid of some. Good point. Or or it's like, uh, did you ever go to a camp and like yeah, run sure. a race, but you ran, ran terribly, but you still got a ribbon that just said participant? Oh yeah. I, maybe it's like that. That's like every race I ever ran. Yeah, same here. Basically, <laughs> I had a, a trophy once that it just it was a sad face. Really? Yeah, there's a Josh. baseball bat just kind of sitting at the foot of the, <laughs> the kid with his head hung down, frowning. Yeah, I played church sports, so we didn't uh, – they didn't do a lot of trophies even in church leagues. Like right. the ultimate victor of the church league got a trophy, but they weren't big on like ribbons and trophies. The ultimate victor of the church league, I would imagine, is Salvation, Jesus. yeah. <laughs> we all won. Okay, so then you've got your best of breed winner, and then that dog can then advance to – a group show where all these best of breed winners compete, AKA or AKC Westminster. <laughs> right. So, um, to make that point, when you are at a, a specialty show and you're aiming for Westminster, which I imagine every dog there is, oh, sure. you want to win best of breed. You can win points and become a champion through winning other stuff like best of opposite sex, best of winners, winner's dog, winner's bitch, right? Yes. But to move on to the next level, you have to win best of breed of that show, and you have to win a bunch, I imagine. That's right. And at this point, half of our listeners are delighted, and half their eyes are rolling back into their head. Man, <laughs> we just explained the heck out of that. I agree. Um, so we're at... Best in show. Yeah. The movie. That's such a good movie. If you've not seen Best in Show, the Christopher Guest film, yeah, uh, just go out and see it right now. Yeah, just it, stop. <laughs> I think it's streaming right now. Oh, I'm sure it is. Yeah, it's really good. It's hard to pick out a favorite part of that uh, movie, but the scene that always pops up to me is when Parker Posey is trying to get a replacement. Uh, was it a bee? A yeah, little, there's a, it's a little a bee. bee stuffed yeah. animal. Yeah. <laughs> she can't find it. Yeah. And the guy's trying to help her. He's like, well, this is yellow and black. And it was like a parrot or something. I can't remember it all. But she's just like my hero. Yeah, she's movie. great. <laughs> she's very good. All right. So um, a little bit on the AKC. Uh, there are several hundred dog breeds in the world, but the AKC only recognizes a little over 150. 150. That's it. And they separate those into uh, groups. And yeah, the AKC loves categorizing, breaking, putting dogs into categories and breaking them down and then putting them into new categories. Yeah. And that's what they do here. And the poor dogs are just like, what? <laughs> can I have a, uh, a treat? Can I get a bacon <laughs> strip or what? Squirrel. Um, okay, sporting dogs is one. Um, obviously, these are dogs that are good for hunting, pointers, retrievers, setters, and spaniels. Yeah, those are good dogs. Great dogs. Um, hounds, beagles, bloodhounds, dachshunds. I like hounds except for the baying, the howling. Oh, they howl? Oh, my God. Yeah, a beagle. Have you never heard like a beagle? No, I've never had a beagle or oh, been around wow. beagles that much. They are loud and insistent. Really? Yeah. Insistent. <laughs> Super cute puppies, though. Possibly the cutest puppies of any breed, I think. Yeah. Those and, um, uh, oh, man, what's the one I'm thinking of? The little puff balls. It's a it's a, an Asian dog. The little puff balls. Mal- Maltese? No. no. Like, is it a little dog? Yeah. In the end? Yeah, but the, like the puppies are little puff balls, and they stay li- they stay puff balls. Like oh, a Pomeranian. Life. Yes. Yeah. Those are pretty cute puppies. Yeah, too. they don't even look real. It looks like no, if you exactly. squeeze them, it should make a little noise. Right. <laughs> they do. <laughs> they do. Yeah, but you don't want to do that. Okay. Um, working dogs. Uh, we're talking Great Danes, Rottweilers, Saint Bernards, dogs who are hardy, and uh, they even, you know are used as working dogs, like search and rescue, stuff like that. Right. Um, and then there's terriers mm-hmm. that chase rats. Do they? Maybe even fight a uh, um, cobra or two. Oh. Uh, those are um, little uh, schnauzers, Scottish terriers, also known as Scotties. Yeah. Bull terriers, which you would recognize as Spuds McKenzie. Yeah. Man, those things are weird looking. My buddy Clay just got a uh, giant schnauzer. Uh, They're big. Well, this thing is like six months old, and he's already as big as my biggest dog. Yeah. And he was like, 
just wait till you see his name is bro he's like what do you see bro at the end of this he's going to be enormous how how big is he expected to get weight wise uh i don't know but really big he's awesome very very fun dog yeah just like for a dog to be that young and that big they don't have control of their limbs yet <laughs> yeah. so bro would just go running downstairs and just like face plant and then get up and you know with the happiest expression yeah, yeah. behind his little eyes Puppies that you can't are cute see like that there um what else do toy dogs have? yeah chihuahuas uh poodles pugs and how you pronounce it? I always said Shih Tzu. Is it Shizu? Shizu. Shizu. Uh, non-sporting dogs. Uh, I guess these are the intellects. This is a catch-all breed um, when you don't have unifying characteristics, which is kind of sad. The one unifying characteristic is these dogs don't play. They don't play. Bulldogs, Dalmatians, and the American Eskimo dog, which I've never heard of. Yeah, it's basically like we don't know what to do with you guys, so we're right. going to put you in the non-sporting dog. And then two more, herding dogs like mm-hmm. Australian Shepherds and uh, miscellaneous. So remember we said that the AKC likes to classify pe- dogs. Yeah. And there's more breeds than it recognizes. This is a group that they you can't win points. You can't win any uh, major awards, I believe. But if there's a breed that's starting to get more attention, there's more people breeding it, yeah. it's like a part of the process of becoming recognized. You, you start out in the miscellaneous group. So that's pre-recognition almost? Yeah. yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Hey, man. <laughs> These people are keeping track of like the that's dog's cocksuredness. I mean, <laughs> they are uh, they're, they pay attention to details. All right. So the best of breeds in each of the group are going to uh, compete in the group show. And then if you win that group show, then you compete in the ultimate. I think we skipped that part, which is the all-breed show. And that's the all-star game, the Super Bowl. That's Westminster. The chess match. Right. The, the Bobby Riggs versus uh, Billie Jean King. That's when, a, that's when a, um, a judge goes through each of these groups and picks out the best. Yep. Right? Um, Seven groups because the eighth can't win. Right. And um, they basically go through and say, you're number one, you're number two, you're number three, you're number four. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, that number one is the best in show. And the controversy erupts. Twitter goes crazy. I'm going to have to pay attention this year. It's Yeah, it's fun to watch. Yeah. Uh, I've never watched it where I was like tense. Oh, sure. But, uh, you know, I've been like, oh, that's great. Or, oh, really? That That's that's not that great. I'm sure you find yourself rooting for certain dogs, though. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, there's always a dog. There's always at least one, if that not captures several, your heart. where you're just like, <laughs> I like that dog right yeah. there. Uh, all right, let's talk about the criticism of dog shows. Yeah, because there's definitely plenty. Yeah, there it's out there. Um one of the problems that certain groups have is that when you're talking purebred dogs, you're talking about breeding. And um, I myself and many others are against dog breeding because there's plenty of dogs out there for the taking. Yeah, but they, they're they mutts. <laughs> so what good <laughs> are they? Just um, so breeders basically breed these dogs to acquire these or to at least hold on to these attributes yeah. And that means inbreeding sometimes, and that means shorter lifespans and disease and uh, defects, birth defects. Yeah, like Dalmatians tend to suffer from blindness, and right. German Shepherds suffer from hip dysplasia. Yeah. And these these traits have become associated with the breed, these standards of the breed that the AKC maintains. Yeah. And it's kind of like, well, yeah, but if you if you want to have a dog that meets all these other criteria, it's also going to get dysplasia when it's six. And yeah. it's just part of inbreeding. It's narrowing of the gene pool. And I've definitely noticed, and this isn't 100%, of course, but all the dogs and people I've known who had dogs throughout the years, I've noticed more purebred dogs dying younger yeah. than the mutts. Well, supposedly they have a weaker immune system. Like, remember, I don't remember what episode it was, but we were talking about that experiment that um, – people scent people use scents to detect yeah. an immune system different from yours because when you put together your immune system and right. somebody else's immune system to yeah. reproduction the kid should have a doubly great immune system man that was a long one, time yeah. ago remember that yeah it was i don't the remember what days. episode it was i have fun memories. smell maybe maybe so yeah Um, 
So uh, remember a few minutes ago we were talking about the miscellaneous category can eventually earn you status as a, an officially recognized breed. Um, the American Border Collie Association, the ABCA, really didn't want their dog to become recognized by the AKC because they thought that meant, well, once it's an official breed, then that means breeding will become more intense and these dogs, you know, will suffer from all these things that we just told you about. Yeah, they specifically petitioned with the AKC and said, and said don't, recognize, don't us. recognize us. And the AKC said, we're going to recognize you. <laughs> and I don't think it was maliciously, but they're like, this is what we do and we're going to recognize this dog as yeah, a breed. No, they were like, had you not asked, we wouldn't have, <laughs> but you did, so sorry. Uh, and PETA has uh, also filed um, an official objection um, against tail docking, which is when they amputate, you know, the tail so you have the little nub. Yeah, it's not just tails, the ears. Oh, yeah, ear cropping, sure. Yeah, um, there's a lot of breeds that have these unnatural attributes that you have to perform surgery on to get. Yeah. Which is counterintuitive because you're talking about the idealized version of a breed. Yeah. Why would you have to take some sort of technological step to yeah. to reach that ideal version? Like, if it doesn't happen naturally, it seems really awful. Yeah, it does to me, too. But, I mean, I don't even declaw my cats, so. Yeah. You know, that's the way to go. That's the way I am. But, but I've got crap all over my house. It's cat scratched But yeah, but, at the um, same time. You know, uh, Holly Fry of Pop Stuff, uh-huh. she was talking about how um, she lets her cats play on their iPad. Oh, really? And I was like, you must have a serious scratch guard because there's like cat playing apps on iPad. Now. Oh, wow. Um, and she's like, well, I don't think we have a scratch guard. Well, when cats play around like that, they'll usually don't have the claws out. They're usually just pawing around. You would hope. But yeah, I wouldn't put one on my iPad. Yeah. No way. Um, I, I put on the little sticky things. They have like clear right. tapettes that you put on like your couch arm. Yeah. And those are unsightly and collect hair and dust and <laughs> just one of the things. If you're an animal owner with five animals in your house, it's hard to not live with some hair. Do you have a Roomba? Nah. You should probably get a Roomba. It might change your life. Yeah, I, I, I'm in love with my vacuum cleaner. So I feel like that would be cheating on Luxy. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Okay. That's it. <laughs> There's um, no follow up. So what else was there? Oh, Jonah Goldberg had some words about breeding, especially with the AKC. He compares it to eugenics. Yeah. In fact, he thought it spurred u- the eugenics movement. Yeah. And we were like, oh, wow, we, we have this really great dog and um, uh, we should do this with humans. I'm tired of people with epilepsy. Let's just get rid of them. <laughs> and, of course, you can go back and read or listen to um, Is It Legal to Sterilize Addicts? Yeah, that was episode a good one. basically was all about eugenics. That's true. Um, he also contends, and not really contends, it's pretty obvious, that it's a beauty pageant. They're focusing on these physical attributes, and um, only the aesthetic matters, in his opinion, and that's not something he says, you know what? If you want to judge a hunting dog, take it out hunting. Right. And see how it does there because these dogs, uh, these dogs, these dogs have jobs. You know, most dogs do have a job of some sort. Right. And let's see how they do in their job. Yeah, like that's how you would truly appreciate a breed, you know, not just its looks. And um, you mentioned uh, UK's Crufts. Um, yeah. The England, England's Kennel Club runs Crufts. Um, and they do have lots of agility and stuff like that. Apparently, they're criticized for going too far the other way. Right. That they need to bring back more confirmation, conformation. Right. Um, but yeah, if you if you go to England and you're into dogs, you're going to be very surprised because their their big show doesn't look anything like ours. Yeah, those are the. Uh, well, we'll get into agility trials, but do, is that what they have in there where you're running between the, um, you're bobbing and weaving and going through the tunnels and yeah. Obedience stuff, too. Yeah. And the AKC has these things that's just not part of the big one, the Westminster show. Right. Right. Um, But, Chuck, you would also probably appreciate England's Kennel Club maybe more than the AKC because they have something called Scruffs. Yeah, I want to see this televised. It's it's basically the Cruffs for crossbreed dogs, non-purebred dogs. And it's just adorable that they have this. And they welcome anything, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you have to have your dog trained. You can't just walk up off the street. But as far as breeds go, you can enter your dog. Uh, the criteria are pretty wide open. Mm-hmm. And they just look for good temperament, good health, and good character, which I like. Yeah. 
So um, we talked about agility trials. These are sometimes separate competitions altogether. Right. And then, like you said, in England, incorporated into the best in show. And that's where they're basically doing like a little obstacle course. Which is adorable. Off leash. I mean, did you see this picture? That is the cutest picture ever in this article, (laughs) How Dog Shows Work. Yeah. It's it's just a little terrier jumping over like a little post, and he's got this look on his face like, I'm going to do it. He is going to do it. He's got his tail up. Man, that's a cute picture. Uh, And then obedience trials are uh, basically taking commands from the handler like, you know, you got to be listening. Some of the commands are just uh, uh, vocal. Some of them you can't speak at all and you're just using hand gestures Mm -hmm. and they're just seeing how well trained your dog is. Right. Um, Yeah. the, The dog can become the champion, which is the national obedience champion. Which has got to be kind of a dubious honor among dogs. Like, you're the most obedient dog in all the land. Yeah. It's kind of like um, Kurt Russell when he was, like, the star of Disney movies. It's like, yeah, you're a movie star, but you're also, like, this, <laughs> you know, clean-cut teen Oh, those idol, are great. I know? remember those. But even he distanced himself later. He's like, no, I'm, I'm badder than this. I'm Snake Plissken. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, boy, I forgot about those early movies. Those were awesome. I was a big fan of those. What was it, the, the kid with two white shoes or something like that. <laughs> they were really like <laughs> vanilla. Yeah, they were pretty vanilla. Yeah. Um, so over the years, uh, we have a few little stats. Uh, the breed that has won the most, the Fox Terrier, 13 times. Not bad. Yeah. Um, the dog that has won the most was champion Warren Remedy, <laughs> who was uh, a Fox Terrier who won three times in a row in the early 1900s. So that's pretty good. Yeah. My favorite's the oldest dog to win, the eight-year-old Papillon. Oh, yeah. Who won in 1999. uh, Champion low-ticky supernatural being. (laughs) And uh, the youngest ever was uh, a a rough collie named Lond Loyalty of Bellhaven and won on its nine-month birthday in 1929. Nine months old. It's pretty young. Makes bro look like an idiot. Bro is an idiot. <laughs> He's lovable though. I guess that's about it, right? Yeah, I'm gonna watch this year. I'm gonna. It's appointment TV for for me now. Good. That is good. I think you'll like it. And then go onto Twitter and register your anger or your happiness at the winner. I will do so. Maybe I'll live tweet. Your thumbs are gonna <laughs> hurt. I gotta get our Twitter login. I don't even know it. <laughs> really? Well, you're the Twitter master. I just leave that to you. I will. Uh, I will. I'll email it to you. Okay. And by the way, our Twitter handle is SYSK Podcast. Yeah, I knew that part. Okay, so Chuck, uh, if anybody wants to learn more about Best in Show and dog shows um, and to see this adorable picture of this terrier jumping in midair, man, it's a cute picture. You can type in dog shows in the search bar at HowStuffWorks.com. And since I said search bar in there, I imagine it's time for listener mail. But first, Chuck, I feel like we should wish everybody a happy new year. Yeah, I hope you had a great 2012. And if it wasn't great, here's to better days ahead. Very nice. Very nice, Chuck. Um, And I want to wish a very, very happy birthday to my sweet and wonderful wife, Yumi. Happy birthday, babe. Happy birthday, Yumi. That's very sweet. Okay, uh, listener mail, huh? Yes. Okay. All right, Josh, I'm going to call this uh, Crying uh, During Music. Um, And this is from Angela in Columbus, Ohio. Hmm? I should say go Buckeyes. Family. Yeah. My family would also me say out. go blue. <laughs> uh, who's blue? Michigan. Oh. Ooh. Tough words. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, listening to Chuck talk about his experience at Carnegie Hall made me want to share this story. Uh, I heard a story one day about a new musical based on a book, uh, Wicked. And I know we all know this musical now about the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had a soundtrack for about a year before I saw it. And I found out there was a Broadway Across America tour coming to Columbus, Ohio. My husband and I bought tickets, went with a group of friends. I'd been listening to the soundtrack for about a year, as I said, so I was really excited. So I'm watching the show, really enjoying it, getting swept up in the stage production and the acting. The music was better than I even thought it could be. And when they hit the main song, Defying Gravity, sung by Edina Menzel on the soundtrack, that's when it happened. I had a Chuck moment and broke down sobbing like a little baby. I don't know if I call that a chuck moment. <laughs> I mean, I'm sensitive, but... That's pretty hilarious. <laughs> I'm, all right, I'm weepy. Uh, the song itself is incredibly moving overall. There's a point in the middle where there's a break from the action, 
And before she hits the third verse, she says a few lines, turns the last line into this incredibly cathartic note, and takes off in flight. Sitting here, remember it, I'm actually choking up. Uh, and that's where I could no longer control myself. All through the third verse, I was sobbing uncontrollably, loud gasping sobs. Both my husband and my brother-in-law offered me comfort, but I could not control myself. I cried through the end of the song, and the house lights were coming up for intermission. Uh, my husband gave me a hug, not really knowing why I was so moved, and I still can't say why. Uh, I was a mess and incredibly embarrassed, but it was a beautiful moment for this touching character who speaks to me. Uh, P.S., and this from Angela in Columbus, P.S., I feel a sense of strength and catharsis also currently while listening to Shake It Out by Florence and the Machine. Huh. Well, that was a specific email. Yeah. That, thanks for sharing your story. What, what was that person's name? Angela. Thanks a lot, Angela. We appreciate that. That's pretty cool. Um, so what do you want to say? I don't know. Dog show uh, stories? What do, you, yeah. what do you think? No? Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> dog show stories it is. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us about your dog show story, you can tweet to us. Remember, it's SYSK Podcast. And of course, we're on Facebook, facebook.com slash stuff you should know. And you can send us a good old fashioned email uh, to stuffpodcast at iheartradio.com. Stuff You Should Know is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.